Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. It's actually raining outside right now pretty hard, so hopefully you can't hear it too well. So today let's solve an easy question, reverse a linked list. And this question is actually like a sub problem that's needed in a lot of other questions, like linked list related questions. So it's definitely good to understand. So just like the problem says, we have a linked list, we've got some nodes and, and we just wanna take each of these links reverse them, keep doing that with every link, and then this is gonna be the new head, and then we're gonna return that. And they tell us that this can be done two ways, iteratively, meaning with just pointers, and also recursively, and I'll show you how to do it both ways. So we can do this with two pointers because we wanna reverse it, so like from the perspective of this node, instead of the next pointer pointing at three, we want it to point at the previous node one. So if we wanna do this iteratively, we can use two pointers like many problems. Now, what are the two pointers gonna be? We can have initially a current pointer. So we can initialize current to the first node, which is our head. And we can also maintain a previous pointer, which initially is going to be set to null. So for the first node one, we're going to take the next pointer and reverse it. So now the next pointer is going to be pointing at null. So this is now going to be the last element in our new reversed linked list. So now we can shift our pointers. So we're gonna take the previous pointer and then shift it to current, and we're gonna take the current pointer and shift it to the next node. Now, since we broke this link, we have to save this somewhere before we end up breaking this link, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the code. So now our current is two. We wanna take the next pointer and reverse it so the next is now gonna be like this. So it's gonna point at previous. So we can reverse the next pointer and set it to previous. And once again, we're gonna shift our previous pointer to current and our current pointer is gonna be shifted to next. Now we're finally at the last node. We can once again update the next pointer of this current node. And so now when we update our pointers, previous will be here and current is gonna be at null. We've reached the end of our list. Now we wanna return the head. How do we return the head? Lucky for us, the previous pointer is equal to the new head, right? So this is gonna be our result. Just like in the drawing, we can initialize our pointers first. Previous will initially be null. Current will start at the head. And we wanna keep going until we reach the end of the list. So while current is not null, we're going to reverse the pointers. So we want current.next to be set to previous, and then we can shift our pointers, right? So we can update previous, set it to cur, and cur is gonna be equal to current.next, but notice how we set current.next to previous before. So when we do this, we actually are gonna have a temporary variable called next, which I will do at the first line when we start our loop. So we can save that in next. So then when we update current.next, uh, you know, we still have that next pointer. And lastly, we return the result, which we know is stored in previous when this loop stops executing. So it works, and this is actually the most optimal solution. The time complexity is big O of n, and the memory complexity is big O of one because we're just using pointers, right? No data structures or anything. But if we wanna do the recursive solution, then the time complexity is also gonna remain linear, but the memory complexity is gonna be linear as well. So we're gonna need extra memory. So it's not the best solution, but I'll still show you how to do it. So usually the best way to think about recursive problems is to break it down into a sub problem, right? So if our initial head is one, 
we start at one and this is our linked list, right? But let's say I want to do a recursive call. Instead of reversing the entire linked list, I'm going to reverse the remainder of the linked list. So everything except this one. So now I have a sub problem, right? Now I only have two nodes to deal with. But let's take it one step further. This is now my new head, right? And I'm going to break it down even more. I'm going to say reverse this portion. Reverse the sub problem. Reverse only one node. So then if we try to break it down even more, then we're going to get this is our sub list, right? But this is just null. So we can't really reverse that. That's the base case. So now we're at this, we only have one node and we want to reverse it. How do we do that? Well, the next pointer is pointing at null. Instead of that, we can take the next pointer and set it to previous. Not really because this is recursive and at least the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to set, I'm going to keep the pointer pointing at null. So we technically reversed this portion, which is just this right it's just a linked list of one so now we're going to pop back up out of our recursive call and now our job is to reverse these two uh, nodes so since we're at two we can access three so what i'm going to do is say okay the next pointer of this is actually going to be set to me to is going to be set to two where i'm at right now but my next pointer, two's next pointer, is going to be set to null. So notice that so far we have done our job. We reversed a linked list of size two, right? This is going to be the new head and this is the tail. This is the end of the list. So we did our job of reversing it, uh, reversing these two nodes, but we still have one more node. So we're going to pop back up out of our recursive call. Okay, so now we're finally at the last call. So our sub problem is to reverse these three nodes. And we can repeat the same thing we did over here. We're gonna, for one, in, since one has access to two, we're going to set two's next pointer over here. Instead of null, we're going to set it to one. And the next pointer of one is now going to be null because we've reached the end. This is going to be the new end of our linked list. So we've done our job. We recursively took our linked list and reversed it. The only problem is that we are doing this recursively. So we have to, in our code, we're going to have to maintain the last node as the new head. So now let's code it up. As with most recursive functions, you want to do the base case first. So if the head is null, we can return null. And I'm going to make a variable to maintain the new head, which I'm going to initially set to head. Head is the current node that we're at in our recursive call. So if head dot next is not null if there's still a sub problem if we can keep uh, reversing then we're gonna have our recursive call so reverse the list pass in head dot next and the return value of this we are gonna have as the new head so if this returns something so we're gonna set the result of that to new head and since head.next is the next node of head, we want to reverse that link. So what we can do is get the double. So head.next.next dot next is going to be set to head. What this is doing is just reversing the link between the next node and head. And lastly, we can say head.next is going to be equal to null. So if head happens to be the first node in the list, we're setting the next pointer to null. And of course this function wants us to reverse the list and return the new head, so we're gonna return the new head. So I think 
So this works, and I think it might be a little confusing the way I wrote it, because we have head.next.next, .next, but if you want to understand it a little more, I would try to like mentally run through a couple of test cases. For example, if you were just given one node, like if you were just given a linked list of this, try to run through the code, see what the code does, see what the function returns, see which, like this statement would not ever execute if we were given a linked list of size one. This is not going to execute. So just kind of like try that out, see what happens if you had a linked list of size two, like this, and use pen and paper, draw a picture. And lastly, the reason why the memory is linear is because if we were given a linked list of size two, our recursive call is gonna be size two. But I hope this was helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.